All right, guys. So today we're going to be talking about how to effectively subcontract your recruitment services. Basically, when to use a search firm or a staffing agency. And that is exactly what we do here at New Config. So a little intro about myself. I run New Config, which is a search firm and headhunting uh, agency for IT services, financial services, uh, people who have uh, accountants, CFOs, controllers, people look to have staff IT directors. VPs of IT, CTOs, developers, solution architects. We also are very strong in staffing and, and searching for salespeople, operations people, manufacturing people. So that's what we do. Uh, New Config is a $1.5 million organization based in Philadelphia. I've been running New Config since 2012. Today is 2024, so for 12 years now. So that's what we do. And I think I'm an expert in talking to you about why to use a search firm because that's what I bring to my clients all day every day this is what I do so let me tell you about it and why you want to use a search firm so the way I look at it is let's say you forget about searching I'm gonna give you an example in another facet in another facet of life why use services in general let's say you want to eat you have a couple options you can make yourself food it's gonna take you time you gotta first buy all the ingredients you're gonna make the food or maybe be, you got to make it, but you have no idea what you're doing. You don't know how to make um, Mexican food or Russian food like borscht or Chinese food. You don't know how to do it. You're going to spend a lot of time doing it. Uh, trial and error. You're going to make it. It might suck, uh, but it's going to be cheap. You're going to do it yourself. You're going to save a lot of money, but you're going to spend a lot of time and you don't know what you're doing and you have to buy the ingredients. That takes time. So it's a lot of time investment and the result might suck. Now you could also might not suck, but it just might not be as good if you go to a restaurant. Now, if you go to a restaurant, you're going to enjoy the environment around you. You're going to pick the restaurant, right? So you like the environment around you. The food is going to be made by a professional who has spent years in school making this food or years of hands-on experience making this type of food. And they already have all the ingredients. They invested their time and money getting the best kitchen and ingredients, getting the best utensils, getting the best uh, things that they need to make the food out there. It's in their kitchen and they know how to make it. They're excellent experts at it and they're going to make it faster than you. It's, it's going to be most likely 99% more delicious than you can make it unless you're a chef yourself or you take pride in being a chef, but most people are not. So 99% it's going to be better than the food you can make. The environment's going to be prettier. It's going to taste better. Um, it's going to be much faster, but time, uh, you're going to save a time, but you're going to lose all money. It's going to be a lot more expensive. So if you're like most people, if you're like me, I eat out two or three times a week. Many Many people eat out only once a week. So if you eat three meals a day and uh, there's seven days in a week, which there are, there you eat 21 meal, but you only eat out maybe once, maybe twice, maybe three times a week. That means the other 18 to 20 meals you make yourself. Why? Because it's cheaper and that's pretty much mostly it. It's usually just cheaper. Maybe now people could argue the ingredients are better, but, uh, but many kitchens and the restaurants have great ingredients too. But basically it's cheaper to, um, to make the food yourself. Um, so most people want to save money and they make the food themselves at home 20 times a, a week. But one time a week, they go out and eat them through their friends because they like the environment. Or they go out two or three times a week, depending on your budget. Or they might go to McDonald's five times a week because it's fast or Wendy's or another fast food joint. So where am I getting at this? The same thing applies to recruitment services. Same thing applies to recruitment firm. Why use a subcontractor to outsource your recruiter? Because it's fast. It saves you not just two or three hours of time. It saves you weeks of searching. It's uh, it's faster. There will be experts doing it. Even if you are an expert in recruiting, if you're recruiting three or four or five or ten firms, you don't have the time to look at this one firm or this one position. Or if you are an expert in accounting and you want to focus on being a great accountant or a manager of accounting or a CFO, you don't have the time to focus on recruiting. You want to be focusing on what brings you the most money or what makes your boss happy. Happy. And that's doing your responsibilities. Recruiting is not your responsibility, or you're not good at it. Sure, you could do it, and it'll take you a lot more time than experts, and you might do it wrong, but you could do it, but it's gonna save you money if you do it yourself. Or 
or you let the experts do it. It's gonna save you time, it's gonna be faster, it's gonna be more better service, but more expert. Uh, recruiting firms have more access to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They have more access to tools, they have more access to capital. So they have, for example, a company such as New Config, New Config, my organization, we have more databases, we have access to six databases that we use, we have other recruiting platforms that we use that I don't want to reveal, it's confidential, that we use that you don't. That make us much faster, more productive, and much better in finding the people than you would ever if you do it yourself. Now you could do what we could do, it would just take you years to get up to the level that we do. You'd have to invest in more databases, you have to buy Monster, Career Builder, Dice, Indeed, LinkedIn. We spent over $200,000 on that. Yes, there's 11 of us, but even if you uh, divide that in a round number like 10, it's gonna cost you $20,000 per recruiter to uh, get to the same place that we are at. So it's gonna cost you tons of money, tons of time, which you don't have, and plus you're not gonna be as good as us. So that's why you outsource your recruitment to an agency that actually knows what they're doing, such as New Config. So those are the advantages of using a staffing agency. Now, let's talk about how do you find a staffing agency? How do you, where do you go about that? Now, uh, just like pharmacies, there's an agency, uh, a staffing firm, a headhunting firm, literally on every corner. There's, all you need is access to a phone and a computer and people could be a staffing agency. Uh, similar to there's lots of pharmacies and drug dealers. Uh, sadly, on every corner, pharmacies not, people need their medications, but they're everywhere. That's my point. So you could search on Google for them. You could talk to your buddy, other professional people uh, that you trust. I, I think you should get two or three quotes and pick the one that you find as most professional. And a lot of these firms, I'll tell you the term, a lot of these firms, they charge between 20 and 33% of base salary. And a lot of it, is done through contingencies. What that means is just like a real estate agent, you only pay if you hire one of their people. If they bring you 10 people and you don't hire any of them, it's contingency, you don't pay them anything. Now, there's other firms like Corn Ferry and the other um, firms that charge a retainer, like a lawyer. You have to pay them if, let's say, their role is $100,000 base, you have to pay them 25%, so 25 grand divided by uh, three, you pay a third, eight, eight grand and change before the person uh, before they start the search eight grand and change after the person starts another eight grand and change once the person has been there for 30 days another firm so those there's retainer now there's uh, some firms want to deposit you, they want a, what they call an engagement fee deposit so you put down two or three grand it's at 25 percent a hunt base salary is 100 grand the 25 grand you put down tw uh, two grand and the other what is left 43 thousand you pay once they staff the role and it's usually paid net 30 30 days after the person has started. So to answer your question, there's recruiting firms everywhere. Just like anything else, a lot of them are not that great. A lot of them go ba bankrupt in the first five years. Many firms in this in this economy in America go bankrupt in the first five years. I don't have the statistics on me at hand, but it's 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 probably the majority that go bankrupt uh, because they're really not that good. So what you should be looking for is a firm that's been in business for at least five years or more. You don't want a mon one man shop unless it's super specialized and that person does the role is super specialized that person only does that role why because if they're working on four five ten roles they don't have a lot of time to devote to you what you really want is a firm like you could think there's 11 of us right so we have 10 recruiters and each recruiter is working on one or two roles so that means if you give you could think a role we're gonna have we're gonna put three or four recruiters on your one role and we're gonna be much more successful than a one-man shop or even if you have in-house recruit recruiters we're gonna be much more successful than them because usually you put one or two recruiters on there you could put three or four so you're looking for a firm that is medium size for staffing agency not too big um, not too small and not too big why don't you want a firm that is uh, not too big like a Robert Half um, or a Deco or Randstad I'll tell you why they're really really big so then they have a hundred roles that they're working on and they probably have only 20 or 30 recruiters per that office so that means each recruiter is working on five six roles they don't have enough recruiters so a lot of them don't. What they have heavy in is a business development room. They're not as heavy in recruiters, in my experience. Now, every office of theirs is different. I don't want to speak for all their offices. I'm giving you my personal experience with dealing with them. Uh, they're great people. They're very professional and I like them. But if I was going to, and you're asking my opinion, it's my video, I would recommend a firm like New Config, not too big, not too small in the middle, so they could put three or four recruiters on your role and be super successful and helping 
you. Now, in terms of negotiating terms, I told you it, it ranges between 20 to 33%. You don't want a firm that's too cheap because it means that uh, they're hungry for business and then there might be a reason why they don't get a lot of business. I think 22%, 25% would be good. I recommend contingency. Um, if you really trust them, then you could do go, go retainer after one or two searches. Then I think you should go retainer on them. If you want to do a the down payment and what they call an engagement uh, fee, I recommend that too. It means if you give them an engagement fee, they're much more willing to do the search for you and be much more engaged in it. Hence an engagement fee, a down payment, since you already paid them something. So that is my recommendation if you're looking to hire a subcontracting staffing agency, a recruitment firm, a hunting firm. And most companies do because even if they have a office of five to ten recruiters, they get inundated with too many roles they're working on. And even if they don't have, and definitely if they don't have a, a recruiting uh, department, a head uh, headhunting department, an HR department, an HR department could be all inundated, flooded with too many onboarding, compliance, offboarding. They don't have time to do recruiting. That's why a lot of our clients have a big HR department, but they use us anyway. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is manage their relationship. Now, if you're going to use two or three firms, you have to manage relationships with all of them. I wouldn't recommend using more than that because it gets too much managing relationships with five or ten different firms. They're all emailing you, they're all calling you. A lot of them are submitting the same candidates. You don't know who to pay. It gets very frustrating. So I don't recommend that. I recommend just using two or three firms, maybe one, preferably new config. But if you don't want to do that, two or three firms max. And monitoring their, their progress. I do recommend you put somewhere in the contract, first come, first serve. So if a recruiting firm submits a candidate and he's already been submitted by another firm, you don't pay them. You don't want to be in the position where you owe money for to two firms for staffing the same person. It's like paying for an Apple twice. But here you're talking about paying 20 grand or more for a, uh, something twice. I don't recommend doing that. So put that in the contract. Whoever submits the person first through email gets ownership. That's my advice on that. I hope this video has been very educational for you about what recruiting firms do and how much value we could add to aid to companies. We add a lot of value. We save them a lot of time and productivity. I do recommend you come to us to new config. If you all have trouble filling roles, because this is what we do. We've been doing this for 12 years. My contact information is below the video. Again, I'm Dimitri Norman, the principal at new config. If you have more questions, I'd love to answer them. And I hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for the next one.